Midnight Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we interrupt your regularly scheduled program to actually talk about AEW. No, I'm I'm not even joke. It's it, we're totally serious about this. We are going to talk about AEW for like a majority of the show because we are going to go all in this week on the biggest pay-per-view in AEW's calendar, AEW All In from Wembley Stadium for maybe the final time. Don't worry, I know we both know nothing about what's going on in AEW. That's why we have a special guest with us and he's going to cut us some slack. Slack is back, folks, to talk about AEW All In. All right. So, Love yeah, it. so sit back, relax and uh yeah, let, let's go all in on AEW, exclusively here on Rest Live Radio, Kings of Rings Podcast, 386, starting right now. Oh, man, all in's going to be an American thing now. It's going to be weird, isn't it? American males. Oh, God. American males. Oh, God. American I, I males. bet you that's, that is where males. American Made came from. I, I can almost guarantee it. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 386, cutting you some slack. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you're watching us, thank you again. Please leave a like, uh, share, and subscribe. If you are listening to us a couple of days later, uh, also, thank you. Uh, hit some of those links below. Like, rate, comment, do all that fun stuff uh, for us. It really helps us get this show out there this week folks um it's just myself and will will is here as well hey will um but <laughs> um, I reckon, man. yes yes M- mr america will <laughs> Shock is what they say kayfabe is not going to be with us we are actually recording on kayfabe's birthday so kayfabe had many many better things to do than be here with us suppose you know it's their freaking birthday and they deserve a time off and especially because in lieu of kayfabe we brought in our official AEW correspondent, oh, it's official now. no it's longer official. an intern. I'm, just, I'm conducting some AEW. Yeah, thank you, Excuse thank me. you, Adam Schefter. Ladies and gentlemen, back again. <laughs> Slack. Oh, I'm not some guy on your royal facts anymore. I'm actually AEW correspondent. Yes, I said I you're the that. official AEW correspondent. Welcome back, Slack. How are you? Good, but I'm just curious as to how long it's going to take before Kay's pet takes my job again. Um, Boris isn't that. Yeah. Boris isn't that bright, so you might have some time. Cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. if you if you lose to a dog, like you kind of deserve it. <laughs> I lost to a fucking inanimate object last time, for honest here. Listen, Freckles yeah. was on the yeah, ball. You did Freckles was on the ball. I don't care what anybody says. Freckles was freaking great. Well, Terrence, how are you today, sir? Uh, first of all, the cake to Kay Murphy. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kay. That's my gift to you. Uh, I'm good, Ricky. It's it's uh it's been a good week. Um, summer's rolling down. Thank it's God. seventy degrees. Thank it's goodness, gorgeous. Yes. And uh, I'm I'm ready for fall, man. Bring those bring those pumpkin spice lattes. Bring them on. I'm not ready to be that basic, but I am ready for fall weather because fall is probably the most underrated season of the year. To be honest with you. I agree, I agree with that heavily. I'm allergic to fall, but <laughs> it's fucking worth it, dude. Yeah. Fall. Like I. I, I, I hate that I can't roll around in leaves, but you know when I have a house of my own, I'm going to roll around in the fucking leaves. Like, <laughs> and suffer the next day. No one's going to yell at me anymore, so I'm going to totally do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm ready for, ready for all that. We got a couple of more big summer shows in wrestling uh, to to figure out. You know, we've got All In this week, Bash in Berlin. I guess All Out counts at some point. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting uh, next couple of weeks for the show. Uh, which means I think we're gonna have Slack on like twice in three weeks. It's gonna be weird. Huh. I'm about it, dude. Slack, Slack <laughs> fucking killed it last time. I'm still laughing about how much he burned John Moxley. This, Mox is, this is news ground. to Slack. Do you not know the AEW pay per view schedule, Slack? You are our official AEW correspondent. Don't I make me regret this other, decision. I was going to do some other business about AEW. So let me just. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See? Hmm. See, don't don't make me do your job. I have to check my very busy schedule. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you're just. <laughs> You're just so busy. You should hire a freaking secretary. Anywho, folks, we're gonna uh-huh. get, we're gonna go all in on <laughs> oh, all in. <laughs> but before wow. but before we do, before we do, we do need to talk about a little event that we went to. The first ever event of its kind. The 
Comic Con of Sports, you should say, Fanatics Fest NYC. Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, NFL, Major League Soccer, WNBA. There was a golf simulator, uh, UFC, and WWE icons from all of those leagues and sports and pop culture sensations all in the same place in New York City, and no one got shot. It is actually rather astonishing. Um, I mean, to be fair, is in a nice part of New York City. It's, it's just by the it's just Javits, really. By the waterfront. <laughs> yeah, it's, Javits. it's just Javits Center. A better joke would have been, we're in a giant glass house and no one threw stones. That is also true. The Javits Center is literally a giant Javits Center is just, a giant giant, glass it's just like a glass dome. Yeah, it's a glass. <laughs> a rectangular cube. It's like a just. Like a toy, if you, like a kid made out of building blocks. If you do think about it, it does look like the three the three stages of Hellcage from WCW, because of all the yes. layers. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it looks <laughs> it like. It does, <laughs> it does. Anywho, myself. No, that match was too terrible. <laughs> it was really bad. Myself, <laughs> Willie T, and K Fave all went on Saturday of Fanatics Fest, and we had an absolute blast. Even more so because of all. Of the sports people that were there and memorabilia and stuff galore. Hell, even Jay Z showed up, and he doesn't show up yeah, for shit. I love Jay Z. He's quiet. Shut your mouth, man. Um, but, He's all right. God, Jesus, you uncultured swines. Um, so <laughs> be that as it may, of all the craziest things that happened, all the Hall of Famers from different sports and, and leagues and photo ops. And uh, autographs galore to to get with most of these people. Like we're talking about the Bradys, the Mannings. Kevin Durant showed his face in Brooklyn again after, or New York again after dipping and going to Phoenix. Uh, Anthony Edwards, all of those people. WWE superstars were the only group of people to sell out all of their autographs and photos. We're talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. was there. Even Ozzy I guess, Smith. I guess Hulk like, Hogan eventually sold. Yeah, out. I think Hulk Hogan did eventually sell out at some point. Um, well, you know, I mean, uh, to be fair though, I know Ozzy Smith, but the only reason I know who Ozzy Smith is because I watched Who's Number One so many times, and he was always on there for some reason. <laughs> Smith was and legend. I think I'm pretty sure he was in um, MVP Baseball '05. But yeah. like people, do you think a do you think a 20 year old kid knows who Ozzy Smith is? Probably not. I don't know who Ozzy Smith is. Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not. They. I mean, honestly, do, they, do you think they know who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is? Yes. Maybe if they're ba- if they're a basketball fan, sure. Yeah. But if they're not, no. Yeah, Probably I know not. Kareem, but not Ozzy as the youngest person on this panel. See, there you go. Yeah. And that's fine. He was a shorts off for the Cardinals in like the seventies. Yeah, he was. He did backflips. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. He, he did, did have really a great good. backflip. It sounds like he was very ahead of his time. Yes, he was actually. Very, very, very much. Like, so. uh, there, like, there, there weren't other than okay, other than WWE. Were there many active athletes there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kevin Durant isn't an active athlete. Kevin, Kevin Durant just won the gold medal. <laughs> um, Kevin, yeah, he's an active athlete. For Kevin, sure. Durant. Kevin Durant. He's an active <laughs> athlete when he decides to fucking show up for once, like in the gold medal game. Like you said, the Jeter was there, retired. Yeah. Mannings were there, both retired. Brady was there, retired. Gronk, Gronk was there, retired. Uh, so, yeah, but you're not factoring in legacy. With that, you know, no, no, I know, but what I'm saying is, like, who was from WWE that sold out, like, like actual big names, or like, yeah, fucking we're mid-card? talking LA Jay, Knight, Jay Uso, LA Knight, Bianca Belair, Bianca, Jade, and, and Jay, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Cody Rhodes. Yep, sorry, were Bianca and, sorry, are Bianca and Jade considered one item on together? The no, they, together. Were they were separate, they were separate. Oh, they were separate. They were separate. Oh, and they both, they were and separate. they both sold out. Yep. They both sold, they both out. sold out. I'm I'm not shocked that Bianca did, but like I'm actually genuinely a little surprised that Jade did because like no disrespect to Jade Cargill. I am Car- too, actually. I like yeah. Jade Cargill, but her WWE run to this point has only been afloat been because bad. of Bianca. Been bad. She's only been there for like six months. Not like her AEW time, run was so. that good. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying she's cooked. I'm just saying what's we had what we've had so far has been bad. The only thing that's good about yes, Jade Cargill's run WWE. The only thing that's good about her run WWE right now is that her match on the pay per view isn't the guaranteed worst match of the night like it was in AEW. Yeah, because like yeah. there were so many matches that like, I was I had high hopes for with her. Like her match with Athena was just Oof, moving on. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty crazy that TK and AEW booked Jade way better. Like Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, they also Girl, they also better. signed her and then and then trained her for six months in the PC. 
Yeah, so you think she'd be better. She is better. She's fine. You don't, like, she's also doing a WWE schedule as compared to an AEW schedule. There are some things that you have to get used to. And you're being, you're right. pairing so, her. But, but I'm saying, so you're giving her more reps in the ring, so you think she'd be better. But I, I think her wrestling was better in AEW. I wouldn't say that. But you're, it's not that she's getting reps in the ring. She's getting, like, she's getting trained by Bianca. Like, it's one thing to get reps in the ring when you're doing solo matches. You're not doing solo matches. You're doing tag teams. With Bianca, yeah. also have to factor in exposure as well, Will. With that, yeah. so it's like her matches in AEW, like you were lucky if they went fucking ten minutes. But now, like every match she has in WWE is going like longer than the majority of her AEW matches. So like, she's expected to work a match, not just fucking eat them. And she she does she does do like the her her feats of strength in those moments. Yeah. She's really good at creating moments which make her stand out. It's like, holy fuck. But it's for her, I think it's more the routine things, the little things, because she has been very botchy. I've um, had this. But that happened. Shit happens, right? Like, she slipped the top rope. I think she fucked up a, uh, um, where she landed. You know, crazy things, yeah. whatever. Like a suicide but, dive or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which which will be fixed over time, but... I think WWE oh, has God, this problem so with watching. like. I mean, in her like, backstage, her backstage promos, like when she, when her Bianca and Naomi would get on SmackDown, fucking cringe. Yeah, because you don't really know cringe. about Demore and Mindful. See, okay, <laughs> but it's still cringe. It's not. It's only cringe yeah, to you because you don't WWE know the joke. Do, That's why. Is to a certain extent, I think WWE needs to sort of go back to like the way it was back in like in the. This is, won't make sense off the top, but like it, it I'll bring it cir- full circle, like. WWE doesn't have like attraction wrestlers anymore. Like you know what I mean. Like Andre the yes. Giant was like an attraction. Like he wasn't on every fucking house show. He wasn't on every fucking pay per view. It was just like when Andre showed up, I was like, oh fuck, I, Andre's here. Mm-hmm. And not it, it wasn't just because of his size though. It was because of his inability to fucking move. It's because he wasn't so healthy. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is like someone like. This isn't like for me. I I really wanted Gunther to be a special attraction. Like he only wrestled on pay per views. He only wrestles for titles. Him on weekly TV is weird for me, just because his first like what three and a half, four years that he was in WWE, he only wrestled on fucking takeovers. Yeah, like he wasn't. He wasn't. He was. He was in a NXT uk for a while that's i don't think that he. But he wasn't on weekly television because he seemed like an attraction because he was only on UK and they taped a lot of UK. No, I know, but then when they brought him over to regular NXT, they could have given him that weekly exposure, and mm-hmm. they just chose not to. Right. Well, to your point, Slack too. Uh, but, I th- I feel like about right, a year my main ago, point was that Jade needs to be taken off TV and not be on TV as much as she has been because it's slowly exposing her inability to actually carry a match, and I think it's going to make people really apprehensive when they eventually give her a singles push. You don't take because you they're going to think somebody only off pro- TV. Because they're doing not badly. take them off TV, but like keep keep her on TV, but like do more tag team matches with Bianca or have her manage more of Bianca's matches rather than wrestling matches. You know what I mean? Yeah, that has that has to be. Def- I think she trust. definitely needs. I think she definitely needs to be on TV. But Slack, like, I'm gonna take the word attraction. Jade came in as an attraction, yes. and she very much was presented as an attraction. Yes. She went from attraction to now, oh, she's just learning. Give her time, which is not, which is bad. Have her wrestle just like have her wrestle house shows so you can sell house show tickets. She is wrestling and then house like, shows. Yes, it, no, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I she know, is. But like, I'm just saying, like, don't have Jay Cargo wrestle on weekly television. I'm just gonna fucking say that because it's gonna expose her inability, and they're not gonna yeah. be able to get her off the ground as a single star as much as they should be able to. I see what you're saying, Slack. So you yeah, don't want to have her get on TV to get better at being on TV. She's already good enough to be on TV because so she has that star TV. power quality. Because she doesn't have the wrestling ability. She has the star power and the ability on and as like an attraction, but as a yeah, wrestler, she still she got, she got the, she still got the presence too. Like when she, she shows a, up, you fucking like watch her. Have her just do her AEW squashes. Give her like two minute matches where like the person like gives her a smack and then she just destroys them. Like they were on. They AEW. did that. They did that two weeks ago actually on SmackDown. Chelsea Green. Did she tip? Did she put down Chelsea was Green? It over- I thought it was Chelsea Green. Was it Chelsea? I forget who Jade went. At. It, it was someone. No, it was. It was. I think it was one of the um the tag team champions or something. Was or, it was, Isla? Was Blair Davenport. Maybe. Oh, it was Blair. I, I it think was it was Isla. Blair. It's Isla or Blair? I think it was Blair. Because she, because she's in a singles, so she was in a singles match in the tag team story. Yeah. And she put it down in like five minutes, and she looked great. Yeah. 
So Slack, I, I agree, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you want to have more. a wrestle on TV, do squash matches together yeah. on TV, learn better, learn better on camera, then the house shows do the more technical stuff and learn how to wrestle. Which is exactly. probably what they're sure. doing, but she's also which still... Which is probably what they're doing. Is, she's also still on a tag team, but we just have to give people pace. And, like, Jada's also, I think, very relatively fresh, even when she was in AEW. Like, in all intents and purposes, she probably shouldn't have been on AEW TV as much as she was. Like, she... They she, needed a draw for the women's division, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cause you could, but they just kept on using Britt Baker for a very, very long time. Um, but Bieber doesn't mean now we're back to using Britt Baker. Kind of. Uh, I think they're a little bit more timeless, even though Britt Baker's not the, not the big star now, but there's a lot of Britt Baker stuff that has happened ever since she returned and MJF punched the wall because of it. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. Slash, so Jade sold out. So WWE <laughs> really dominated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Honestly, what it, what what it we was so to get back on topic, and I take full. No, respect. dude, it was great. It's a great. We it's, we we had a great sideberg, but to stay back on topic, when I when I, the, the first thing you hear when you walk in is the fucking WWE entrances <laughs> with, oh, with yeah. the giant stage, like they have an access. And I was first thing I was like, they win. Yeah, they just they won just with that alone. Because mm-hmm. you know what the MLB had slack. The MLB had fucking cleats, <laughs> custom cleats, and like posts. custom cleats, awesome. Custom signed cleats, a few jerseys. But Didn't like, you do the bat the, swing uh, simulator? Uh, oh, wait. So, bat, those, bat sorry, so those videos bat I was seeing on social media of like Rhea Ripley and Drew McIntyre doing engines, that was that this fan fanatic yes, thing? Yes, that was. That yeah. was all there. Oh, yeah. I thought that was just like some like like charity thing they did Ooh, over the weekend. No, they got money for that. <laughs> yeah, it was called Fanatic <laughs> <Yeah>. Fest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought so, it was like, so it's like they. I they have the that. Like, they have that at access too. So you line up and you can do an entrance. Yeah, yeah they, you, they play their Toronto. music on the big jumbotron, and you can go and do the Finn Balor wah thing. We had none of that in Toronto. We had fucking we had guardrails and no security. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it was it was a crazy event. I mean, between all the celebrities around, like Jake Paul was in the building too. Mike Tyson oh. was there. Um, yep. we had NBA had a good Travis NBA. Scott. Travis Scott was a madman. Um, Travis, is this a yearly thing or is this the first? This is the first that they've ever done it. It's the first. The one. rumor is yeah. that they are going to go to Orlando in the fall as well as LA sometime in the early spring. Um, nice for that as well. And it like it was a success. It would there was a lot of space. Um, you could go, you could talk to vendors. You didn't, you never felt overcrowded, which was surprising for me because I thought that thing was going to be slammed. But Javits is also a massive building, so I get it. Uh, but like there were NBA players in the NBA pavilion, like shooting hoops with children. Rob Gronkowski was running 40s with children. Tom Brady was throwing passes. Like it was just, it was the weird, weird time, but it was absolutely awesome. And WWE completely dominated. Of all the fans that were there, it was mostly wrestling fans, and we were the loudest. We were the craziest. Some dude came out the Hulk Hogan's theme wearing Iron Sheik cosplay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was it was really cool. So hot. For, WWE yeah. is definitely. We, we started a fuck you solo chant. Yeah. And like, if if you don't, if you don't watch wrestling and you're like it's a basketball fan, you're like the f- what's what? going on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Triple H popped up out of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah. You know, they gave out a bunch of our legacy belts. Um UFC had a freaking octagon. We met Holly Holm, which was cool. Yeah. In the octagon. In the octagon. The octagon's yeah. really cool. Very bouncy in the octagon. The whole the whole convention was spaced out very yeah. well. Like I like how the um the, the meet and greets were in their own corner. God, thank God. And their yes. lines didn't get in the way of anything else. And they moved. So, like I didn't do any meet and greets, so I just stayed away from that area. Because there was nothing over there for Correct. me. Correct. And I got to do everything else. There was also food everywhere. They had multiple food stations that all pretty much had the same thing. That was really smart. And then they split it up between attractions on one side and then collectibles and stuff you can buy. A lot of lot of card, other. lot of card um stuff. Yeah. Which was good. Yeah. You bought a baseball. And a superstar in the middle. A superstore in the middle. So. Yeah. They Made good money. Yeah, there, no, sure. absolutely great. Paul Heyman. They, and the great thing about it is you had the big stage for the big events. You had a small center stage. You had Rich Eisen was doing a podcast. Sam, We sat in the Sam Roberts podcast, which was a great time. Sam Roberts is an absolutely fantastic interviewer. A very good yeah. interviewer. Very, very, good. very, very good interviewer. There were shows going on the entire time, but unlike, I think, at WWE World, and you can probably agree with me with this one, which apparently that was Fanatic's first event, was WWE World. 
Um, so WWE ended up being the guinea pig mm. for Fanatics Fest. Um, and unlike WWE World, WWE I can yeah, tell WWE World was loud. Remember, I remember it just being like really loud, and this didn't feel loud. It was very yeah. loud. Yeah, it was very. Loud. This didn't feel loud, but it, they clearly fanatics learned. There are still some stuff they had to work on. Um, there's a, some shows went over time, or they they just had scheduling things. Like Rey Mysterio was supposed to do an entrance at like three and end up going on to like three forty five because Travis Scott was yeah. being Travis Scott <laughs> um, and just running around with like a giant security team. Uh, Cody had to leave early, and Cody didn't do all of his autographs and photos. He had to be on a house show. So. There, there was there, mm-hmm. and some people were ticked about that. But there, there seem to be some scheduling things that they need to work out. But I think it's only going to get better. We'll definitely go again. Oh, for yeah. sure, hundred percent. Did we lose Slack? And yeah, that that's just that's just. I think we might have lost Damn. Slack. We're we're on our but own that's here. Okay. <laughs> um, let me see. I can't see. Uh, no, he no, he's turned. He's 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 here. He's muted. His muted. Okay, and, uh, I'm not, I'm not busy. Okay. So he's yeah, okay. here. Um. Yeah, any final thoughts on fanatics? Yeah, we're definitely we're no, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna do it again. I mean, there's definitely growing pains, and I understand like if you got paid to see Cody and you get to see Cody, I'd be pissed too. I would demand obviously a full yeah. refund. I'd probably even try and get my money back for the ticket itself. Mm. Um, but there was plenty of other things to do if that did happen to Correct. you, where I feel like it didn't it didn't have to ruin your entire experience. There was something there for everybody. If you wanted to do the museum and read the plaques and look at the old things. From even the Sports Illustrated section. Oh, the Sports Illustrated Museum was that. dope. Yep. <laughs> if you just want to look at, listen to panels and podcasts all day, you can do that. If you want to wait in line and do the games and do more interactive things like the at UFC Punch, you can do mm-hmm. that. So if you want to just buy stare collectibles, like, wow, someone painted Mickey Mantle's alcoholism. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> like, yeah. There was so much to do all in one place. And if you want to do a little bit of everything, guess what? You can do yeah, that. Yeah, you can even look at all the freaking Super Bowl rings. Yeah, and dude, and shout out to the, the, the soccer trophies. We're really the soccer we're really trophies cool. are dope. I hate watching soccer. Like this, the trophies this, are dope. Yeah, <laughs> the trophies are the greatest trophies. Like Champions the Super League Bowl's trophy just, is like the prettiest trophy in in, in sports, man. Well, that Champions League yeah. trophy is beautiful. Yeah. I, love, I love soccer, They're man. Gorgeous. Yeah, soccer's I'm the fucking they best. They have like. Uh, like the, the the tennis, um, like w- the Wimbledon, the, the Wimbledon Bowl, the yeah, yeah. I'm surprised like nothing like that could have I'm been also, there. Like tennis, NASCAR. Yeah, I'm. Was, like, well, I'm also fun. very surprised <laughs> Lord Stanley's Cup was not there in the displays case somewhere because it has an official home and it doesn't move. Bring the fucking replica. You know you guys have them. No, well, generally we don't. Don't 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 lie to me. No, they have one. No, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, the Stanley the Cup that is currently on tour is the only is the only Stanley Cup. There is a replica that sits in the Hockey Hall of Fame, but they swap it out once the season starts, and it's the real cup in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And it's it it's mesmerizing seeing that cup in person because it's like the greatest cup. It's like the greatest trophy in sports. You could have brought it to Fanatics Fest. I don't give a damn NHL. You could have done better. I mean, the the legacy of the the, the Stanley Cup though is. Fucking really it is really cool. and like and, the, and again to like it feel is, the it's engravings. Just like, I respect the dedication. 100%. <laughs> yeah. feeling the engravings of the names on the cup is just because they let you fucking touch the thing. Like they, they're not like don't touch. Like oh yeah, absolutely touch it. Like you just don't steal it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> yeah, you can even pass off it. But yeah, you know, Fanatics Fest NYC. If it comes to a city near you, definitely check it out. If you are a sports fan of any kind, you'll probably have something really, really fantastic to do. Speaking of coming to a city near none of us. All in is actually coming to America next year. AW AW decided to go to Texas, um, <laughs> not at AT and T Stadium. No, where the Texas Rangers play Globe Life Field, which, <laughs> to be honest with you, folks, is literally like right across the street from where the Cowboys play. It's in the oh, same so. area. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just you know. A little bit smaller. Nice looking, nice looking field though. Uh, but all in for the first time, AW's biggest show of the year is gonna come stateside uh, to look Texas. Look at that belt buckle. Yeah, God, look at that belt buckle. So, uh, oh, AW correspondent Slack, what are your expectations of all in Texas? I don't even. The thing is, is like the problem. Not the problem, but it's just like you could probably predict that card already. Like. <laughs> Like it's it's Fuck. it's sort of fucked go. up, but it it feels to me like you can AEW feels like it's sort of like on a 
very purposeful direction. And I feel like this also this I don't know how, but I feel like this <laughs> is he on the no coast? no he's he's left he's done with their contract I believe. I'm I not know. sure how we're it's gonna it's get the there. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I feel like I have a prediction for the All In pay per view. The All In Texas pay per views main event somehow is going to be Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Championship, and Kenny's going to win it from Hangman. So you're just going to like? I don't know why, but that just it just feels like that's where we're going because I feel like next year they're going to figure out a way to do it. We're getting Kenny Omega versus Okada for the world championship next year. I can, I will, I would put, I would put money on that for sure. Technically, Okada's not even yeah, on the I'll card this year, which later. is crazy. You will, Kenny's made out of paper and wishes right now, so it's. Well, just I'm not like, talking about. I said I'm talking about Okada's not on the card this year. Good. I'm so sick of seeing Okada every week. It drives me nuts <laughs> to no end. As we were talking about before, Okada is not an attraction anymore. It's just fucking Wednesday. He's uh, overexposed. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, like, if a clothesline wasn't it wasn't evidence enough that he was overexposed, but there, there you go. Like I would just say, like with Okada, I understand why you would want to have him on weekly television. Like I, I fully understand that from a business standpoint, but I also don't understand it from a business point because no one's gonna buy a pay per view. Obviously, people will buy a pay per view. But I'm just saying, it's like if Okada's name, if Okada's name was only tied to pay-per-views, I feel like their sell, their sales would be higher, and like their TV ratings would probably be like, I know that's why they're doing this because their TV ratings are slowly going into the fucking toilet. But I don't know. I just feel like signing guys like you know, they're also trying to get a TV deal too. Like the I thing is, is a, like they they have an offer in place. I don't mind yeah, them it's, signing the it's, New it's, Japan guys. Sure. I get why you'd want to sign them because of like the ability, the, the wrestling ability. I fully understand that. But it's just so jarring to see Okada and Osprey on weekly television when it was just like you would only see them every couple of months in North American wrestling. And like to an extent, I'm grateful for it. But at the same time, I'm like, can we just like slow it down, please? Well, you got to do something. And you, you, you sign. Oh, that's controversial. But like, that's just how I feel about it. Not really controversial. You, you but... can't have too much of a good thing, and right now we have too much of a good thing with Osprey and Okada on weekly television. Could be an issue. One of them's actually being used. The other one's just Okada. I think he says "bitch" is the only thing in English he says these days. But I'm actually glad he's not wrestling because at least like it makes his matches more special. But Osprey's wrestling every fucking other week. The last thing I remember <laughs> about Okada doing, he was like messing with like someone's like promo yeah like oh i hit the wrong one i was like jesus christmas i'm so sorry bitch. <laughs> yeah that's that's the last thing i remember i was like wow we're going this angle okay they literally are selling a t-shirt that just is it's his headshot and it just says bitch underneath it i'm pretty sure it's an actually like, a, an the aw design shot. team always top notch oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> always top notch but back to all in will do you foresee us even attempting to go to all in in texas because I'll be honest, I'm curious. I've been to Dallas. I've I'm been to little, Dallas multiple I'm, times, I'm a and I'm very okay with the city of Dallas. Great food, very easy to travel around. I'm ju- I'm curious right yeah. now. I'm not gonna lie, Ricky. I haven't made up my mind about Texas yet. This as a state, fair. Um, say, as I went a to place Austin. to go, or just like Texas as a place yeah. to go. Yeah. As, as 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 a place to go, honestly, and as a state. This as a state. I don't like. Do I like Texas? That's a question I can't yeah, answer right there. now. Um, like Austin, I enjoyed Austin, but part of me was just like, this is it. This is, this is Texas. This is what everyone was talking about. <laughs> like outside, like, like, oh, you know, like when you leave the airport and you're just on the way into the city, you just completely judge the countryside. <laughs> I judged the shit out of Texas, <laughs> but not enough to be like, I hate you. <laughs> like, but, but then again, Austin wasn't good enough to be like, you know what? I like you. Well, so so I think unnecessary hate is such a Texas thing. Yeah, I guess. True. I I need I need a sec I need a second opinion about Texas. So, yeah, I'll go. It's possible. Curious. Sure. I mean, the AEW ticket's not going to be that expensive, you know, in comparison to WWE. So, like, it's relatively yeah. doable. 
Would you I go, go to Dallas. Go to I mean, Dallas I, heard is Dallas, I heard Dallas. Dallas is, is really dope. Would you only yeah. go for the wrestling, or would you go for like, say, like a, like, a, like a Dallas Stars game or like a Cowboys game or something? Number one, I will never sit in a fucking Cowboys game. I do. The stadium's beautiful. Been there twice for WrestleManias. Stadium's great. Love the stadium. Fuck the Cowboys. Um, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man, like, I like the. I just, I just like the Cowboys because I, I like watching it be good in the regular season. And I, and I, I, but I, the, but yeah. I love. I love watching your fans cry after the first one. <laughs> like, I yeah, love it. <laughs> like, week five, this is our year. Yeah, right? They're like they're, they're the Mets fans of the NFL. Um, be- Base fans of the NFL. For fucking- Speaking of Cowboys, my fantasy football draft is going on oh, right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, I got, I, got, I got third pick. I, I do auto draft you every bastard. year. <laughs> you fucking prick. <laughs> it's a strategy. It's a strategy. You need a wild card. You need a wild card in this league. That's me. Jesus. Anywho, but now Dallas is Dallas dope. But if we were, I wouldn't go just for the wrestling to answer your questions. Like I do have, I do have some friends in the Dallas area, so I would probably stay right. for an extended for an extended period, just to, like yeah. chill out and hang with them. Like like if all out was Saturday, we would probably do like Thursday to Monday. Well, well, this is all in, and all in is actually going to be on Saturday, Saturday, July twelfth. So you yeah. are moving it to a Saturday event. Which smart job AEW work well for WWE. Um, to be completely honest with you, uh, so all in Texas yet to be known. It's less than a year from now, July twelfth, Globe Life Field. Let's see what happens with this year's All In. Speaking of which, All In is this Sunday from Wembley Stadium, uh, August 25th, 2024. Uh, on paper, pretty interesting card. I will tell you this. The uh, the card the card we have right now is about nine matches, and eight of those matches are for some sort of title or championship. The ninth match is a gauntlet match that guarantees you a world title shot. Okay. I like a little Kata's front and center every time went on the card. The card. <laughs> yeah. No. no. It's, he might. I don't know, but Okada's just right there in the middle. There's a wild card team that's supposed to be in the Fatal Four Way. I won't be surprised if they somehow work Okada into that. And they have, it's got to do something. Also, Tony Storm being in black and white is one of my favorite things. It is. All it is one of the best way. AEW games that everything she does is in black and white. Yeah, it's. It's. I can't believe it. It's so unique. Golden it's era. Perfect. Golden era. Tony Storm, which is going to be a very yeah. very interesting time. So yes, uh, it. Good for her because she floundered in WWE. She didn't give, she didn't give it enough time, I think. Um, but that's. Just- I, I don't think it was. I don't. I don't think. I don't blame her at all. I think it was just. Management. Yeah, I think it was management. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. It was. Yes. It was more the machine than than her. Yeah. Her. It was. The, it was. It was also the yeah. old. The old creative team, I think, as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say Vince, but yeah, Vince it was the old. I, you can say the old creative team. That's that's the one I'm going with. Um, that didn't know what to the do. Old the old machine. The old. The old team, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so on paper, after, after reviewing this card, uh, hours before the show, on paper, this looks like a really good card. At least the the top parts of the card, like your main, <laughs> your 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 top half of the card looks really good. And everything else kind of just seems thrown together, if I'm being honest with you. So, Dude, this card is kind of fucking with me, because Moxley just looks like Triple H let himself go. <laughs> Although... Mercedes Mercedes looks like Oscar without her face paint. Damn. And then Will Osprey looks like Chad Gable and CM Punk combined. You know, I probably will never look at Will Osprey the same. And then, and then Britt Baker And then Britt Baker looks like Nia Jax. Britt kind of look Britt kind of looks psychotic <laughs> in this. Like she's like her eyes are very intense in this photo. Like everyone in Chris Jericho's Jericho just happy to be like there. High school, yeah. High school Chris <laughs> yeah, Jericho. Happy to yeah. be here. But yeah, dude, like this 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 Image right here is just fucking fucking. <laughs> it, it's it's a weird class photo for AEW. I'll, I'll say it is a weird class photo. It's a very weird class photo. That. So uh, Christian looks great though. Fucking yes, but, yes, very mindful, <laughs> very demure. Um, so so let's go to the top of the card and what's obviously I think going to be the main event. We have what's being crapped at the final countdown: title versus career. Swerve Strickland, the AEW World Champion, who since last year's um, AEW All In in Wembley Stadium has had a fantastic uh, one year run. I remember, I think I remember talking to you. Well, we did All In last year or recapping All In. I was like, Swerve looks like a superstar, and I think he's going to do big things. And lo and behold, he's now the champion going up against. Brian Danielson, who is, I believe by the time All In airs, will be officially his 25th year in wrestling. And Brian Danielson, who has never won the AEW. Yeah. 
with the banished yeah, flowers. Absolutely. Brian Dance, who's never won the AEW championship in four previous attempts, is going after it again. And he said if he cannot win the AEW title, sounds very much like Cody Rhodes, he will never, ever wrestle again. So the big question is, are we seeing the end of Brian Danielson? Yeah, that's the question. AW correspondent Slack, the floor is yours. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you slack will tear shock your opinion no no no, no. <laughs> go ahead slack. i don't have anything against yeah no, go ahead slack I don't have please anything against daniels and i really don't i i did i did um because i said on the, the last time i was here that danielson has the same problem as moxley is that you know they try to make the wwe run not non-existent which you know i understand that and that's fine you know if you weren't happy with that run but at the same time half the reason why you're over in AEW is because of those runs so with that i understand i i don't have any you know malice towards danielson or not, not malice but like whatever i don't have any problem with danielson doing what moxie does mm-hmm. because i think danielson actually does it well yeah. um so with this I, I don't know. I feel like if Danielson hadn't have done his whole like in one year I'm retiring because my kid asked me to. Like I if <laughs> if he hadn't have done if he hadn't have done that, I would find this match more interesting. <laughs> but it like Will said, this is this is Cody Rhodes Jericho. Where it's just like, you know, if I can't win uh, uh Slack I'm not gonna I, I was the one that said it was Cody Rhodes, but go no <laughs> <laughs> I, sure. I know I know I Will and I look the same. It's understandable and sound the same. I get it. I get it. The haircut. It, it's, really it is the haircut. I, I understand. It gets me confused. Yeah. Um, regardless of which King said it, um, it's you're you're spot on with it. So I feel like they want this to be like this match where it's just like, oh, like Danielson might never wrestle again. We already know he's not going to wrestle again. Like he's already talked about the fact that this that this next year. Like, I don't know when his actual contract ends, but I don't see Danielson. Danielson doesn't strike me as the type to like win a belt and then like three months just be like, okay, I'm retiring. Here's, here's your belt back. You mean like what he did but with the WWE World Championship? Well, that was sort of different in that <laughs> regard. He's choosing to retire this time before his neck was like, you're retiring. Um, So with this, I feel like it has to be Swerve. And it should be Swerve because we need Swerve Hangman for that belt at some point. And mm-hmm. I feel like that has to be the all-out match. Um, Obviously getting ahead of myself. But yeah, I'd say Swerve after like a good 25 minutes. He probably hits like three house calls and like two stomps in like succession and just put Danielson out. And then Danielson puts him over. Danielson gets his flowers and off into the vegan sunset he goes. To the vegan sunset. I should have named the title of the show off to the vegan sunset. Maybe that'll be next week's title. Um, hey, hey, man, uh, that's why we used to, I we used to name the shows at the end, not the beginning. I, I know, I know, but like, listen, I had to do cutting some slack at some point. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with slack on this. Uh, Swerve needs the old yeller Brian Danielson, and that's the God what. Damn. But that's the biggest compliment you can give a retiring wrestler. You know, yeah, yeah just put him out. out of his misery. You gonna get, I'm going to save sorry, you from I yourself. You moment from Swerve no, where no. Like, oh, to kick Danielson's head in. No, they, I really hope they don't do I'm sorry, I love you, man. Just kick his head in. Like, I just want Swerve to be vicious. Did the Young Bucks do it as a joke? <laughs> I was going right? to say, the Bucks did that distinct, didn't they? Like, they do it, mul- they've done it multiple times. Yeah. I'm sorry, I love <laughs> Yeah. So, no, this needs to be it. I, I think this all in. And with a w- <laughs> yes, well, with with this all in being the biggest show of the year, and it's being their WrestleMania, and also you you have, they've already eclipsed five years as a company. Now some of your stalwarts, some of your people that helped build the company, even though they're WWE like like uh, former WWE alumnus and whatnot, and helped kind of build this new company, it's time to start phasing them out. So it's time to start phasing them out. And it's also time to start rewarding people in various ways and rewarding people in wrestling terms in various ways for the years that they've had in the instance of swerve strickland you have to reward him for doing all of the good work that he's done those amazing matches with hangman page and he's been a pretty damn good champion for all intents and purposes and you reward him by having him 
go over and beat and get the rub by retiring Brian Danielson. There's almost no better compliment in the wrestling world than to take out a legend and they never wrestle again. I think it has to be Swerve. He gets rewarded for his good work this year, and he also gets you know a little bonus by retiring Brian Danielson. And Brian Danielson will be the final M as you see in All In. I see your point about like giving like the guys that have helped build the company like you know like their their due. Yeah. But at the same time, like or just like you know they're they're sorry the the guys that helped build the company are being phased out. But then you look at like like later on the card, Jericho is 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 champion, like, and he keeps oh, yeah, winning freaking belts. I know. I know. I know. So Jer- Jericho's Jericho's I hope, an anomaly. I hope gets phased. I hope <laughs> Jericho gets phased. was a, Jericho was a great champion. The first one, he was he was the best first champion the they could have had. Yeah. Yes. Which, yeah, Which, yeah. By the no, way, he was, was a phenomenal like, champion. I was the only one on that on that card because I was on the show before that card, and I was the only one of the three of us that, that said Jericho had to win it because of because of star power. And both of you guys were like, "Oh fuck, you make a really good fucking point." We're gonna have so to, call, to contact Freckles point. about that allegation. Allegation. <laughs> Yeah, Slack, like you couldn't remember what Ricky or I said 10 minutes ago. Do you remember five years ago? I have certain you podcasts, said, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I, do, I do remember I do remember um, not wanting Jericho to win that first one. Not but in right. hindsight, it was 100% yeah. the right call. Yep. Yeah. So, well, what's your choice on this? That, be, that being said, uh, I want to see Danielson win that belt one more time. Oh. I have this one more run. One more run. I would not be upset if he won this match and went on for another another run. No, no disrespect against Swerve. Um, I agree with everything you said, Ricky, about passing the torch. And um, five years is a good enough time to 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 like okay, the transition needs to happen a thousand yeah. percent. But then again, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan is one of the most beloved wrestlers of the last thirty yeah. years. One more title run on top before he goes out. It just seems pretty good. It feels good. Yeah, as a fan. So do you want him to go on like the run that like Ric Flair and Mickey James did, where it was just like I'm gonna keep yeah. wrestling until I lose, and then like yeah. Oh. I mean, I, that, if I was gonna book my retirement, that's what I would do. So just, for my personal career, just for uh, I think sake. I think Daniels, but Danielson loves to lose. That's the other that's thing. Awesome. Danielson yeah. loves fucking losing. Some of his best win. matches were in a loss. Look what he did for Kofi. Yeah, my other, exactly. True. My other issue with it is I don't see who they would put over Danielson if it's not Swerve. Also true. Oh, Hangman. No, Hangman, Hangman doesn't need it. Hangman's already. Is but no, but isn't isn't he a heel? Put it this way: Who's your biggest heel in the company? MJF. That, that, that's and there's your answer then. But he already has a yeah. title. Yeah, but I can see MJF. Like you, Dan, Danielson could literally drop it in two in two months. He has drop to Okada, and then that sets up Omega Okada. There you go. That too. How many times? Correct me if I'm wrong. How many but, times have Danielson and Okada gone at it twice? I think so. Maybe three. I I only remember two, and I always felt I, I always felt the like first one when when Okada when the broken arm happened. Yeah, I I always felt like this. They needed to go a third, and four mm-hmm. and f- like Okada Danielson for the title would be great. Um, but I just don't I don't see it happening. I, I, Not do I, but I could see it working for sure. Yeah, I, I can see it working. Yeah, I mean the the good the good news the for the AEW is uh, it doesn't really matter who wins because it's both both can tell good stories Absolutely. moving forward. So you're in a win win situation here. The thing um, is that they're already. I'm, I'm going to go with Danielson. I'm going to go with Danielson. Uh, it's because I think there's more matches in a, that have intrigue where the revolves are flipped, and now he's the champion. Like him and Kenny, when he's a champion, or him and Okada when he's a champion, it's just a different vibe, different kind of match. What tells a different tells a different story? What if? Okay, what if you got the mic and, and, hear, and hear me out? Yes. This is a bit. This is a bit of a whacked out idea, but Usually. I just had I just had an epiphany. Epiphany, but yes. Um, it's an our truth reference. Okay. <laughs> um, I what if Hangman Page wins the Casino Battle Royal? Hmm. And costs Danielson the championship, so he can be the one that beats. So Swerve. he can beat Swerve. So like Danielson's like this close, and Hangman screws him out of the belt, retires Danielson, and that sets up Swerve Hangman. It's a great story. I can see it happening. It's a great I story. Can, and you want to get screwed? You want to get? Honestly, that would be the kick in the. That match, would be though? the kick in the ass. AEW fucking needs to get me like. Fully invested. I I like the idea, but I if it's if it's like AW put a put a three minute video package 
uh, to fucking a Green Day song for Dan- for the time of your life for Daniel Bryan for Brian Danson's oh, like career retrospective. I don't think you. Why it would be such nuclear heat for <laughs> Hangman? It is, that but he, I don't, can't believe they left out the. I don't think it's needed, many, though. I don't think it's needed. But way too many people <laughs> are still cheering Hangman. You need a reason to have everyone turn against him, and this would be a really good reason to turn everyone against him. Yeah, but not for the retirement. Not for the retirement of Brian. <laughs> but it'd be yeah, so it funny, and it'd be so AEW, wouldn't it? It would. It would, but you, you can't do this to him. No problem. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Let's put it like this. Baron Corbin retired Kurt Angle. Anything can happen. In a straight match, though. It wasn't a dusty finish. <laughs> I'm just saying. Fair. I'm just saying. Anything can happen. I'm. I'm putting my money down on it. Hangman Page screws Brian Danielson. It's, it's a risk. It's a risk. It's a. It's a ballsy yeah. move. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. I'd book it. It's a ballsy way to end your biggest pay per view of the year. It's a ballsy move. I don't think honestly, Slack. I don't think the fan base can handle it. Exactly. Which is why they should do it. Which is why they should do it. Why they need to do it. Listen, some people want to see the world burn. And speaking of world burning, friendships are burning in the AEW Women's World Championship. Timeless Tony Storm. Dark horse match of the night right here. Versus former protege Mariah May. It's Mariah. I know it's not Maria. It's Mariah May. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Mariah May. uh, Who essentially turned on tony and tony is all still golden era hollywood tony in black and white even in the freaking logo for this match uh this has been one of the most consistent long-term stories they've been telling for a very very long time uh this had to come to a head and it had to come to a head at their biggest show of the year for the biggest title in their women's division I'll say before, and I said it with with uh, with Swerve and Danielson, you reward people who have done a lot of good work. In this instance, um, in particular, you reward Tony Storm for a great run by having her drop to Mariah May. In my in from what I've seen of Tony and everything she's done, what else is she going to do with this title? Like what what more could you do? Could you go up against Brit, but Brit stuck with Mercedes? You know, in in that title scene, go back to WWE. <laughs> <Just> go back, like <laughs> <laughs> that's what she has up to do, man. That's it. She takes the black and white from Karrion Cross's final testament <laughs> and just takes. It. Dude, she just debuts and just murders Something Charlotte Something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's nothing more you can do. Like the. I, I get it's the timeless run, but it should be timeless because it has a time limit to it. And I think this is a this is a limit here. And I think this is a reward that Tony wins in a loss by helping put over Mariah May um, in in this match. I think this is going to be the first title change or not the first, but it's going to be one of the title changes uh, during this during this card. So I'm going with Mariah May here. AW correspondent Slack. I'm shockingly not sure about this match. Really? Be- yeah, because like there have been a couple of times where I'm like, okay, this is when Tony drops it, and then she never does. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm curious if they think Mariah is ready to be the flag bearer of the women's division. Like I understand that Mercedes Monet is, you know, one of your champions. Yeah. But this is your women's world champion. So this has to be the person that you have a lot of faith in. And up until up until I'd say about two weeks ago, I would have picked Tony Storm. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I really would have. But surprisingly, someone not involved in this storyline is the person that has made me change to Mariah May. Okay. And that is Mercedes Monet's muscle, Camille. Mm-hmm. She's the reason that I'm thinking that Mariah wins this. And I'll bring this point back around when we get to that match. Which is probably happening soon, by the way. I'll explain my reasoning when we get to that match. But I I do think it should be Mariah May. Mm -hmm. But like Will said about Danielson, I won't be shocked if it's Tony Storm. Nor will I be upset. But I think it ha- it should be Mariah May. But I won't be shocked if Tony does it. Interesting. Will tear shock. Uh, Tony Storm, man. It's just the best gimmick. It's the best thing going. If it's still hot, don't don't stop. If the crowd is still into it, if it's it's not getting stale, keep it going. It was it is it was getting stale, and then Mariah May, tur- which is funny. It's Mariah May turn brought it back up. 
Last time I was here, I said that Tony Storm's character needed a kick in the ass to like get, you know, get going again. Like it needed a reinvigoration, and I hadn't even considered the Mariah May heel turn. I knew that was coming, but I figured it would involve her losing the belt. Mm. But Mariah turning heel was absolutely the the change of like the slight change of directory that this Tony Storm character needed to like really get going again, which is why I was thinking about Tony being the one to do it for so long, but I do believe it should be Mariah. It's going to be interesting with this match too as well because Mariah is from the UK if I'm not if I'm not wrong in that she is. So there is going to be a little bit of a hometown advantage with Mariah May. So it, it's going to be a little bit of a bizarre world thing where Mariah to the crowd is a, is a face and Tony is a heel just in this atmosphere alone. So that could have a big play on the outcome of, of the match as well. But I, I still think it's it's Mariah. Like, you know, you have the turn. You got to culminate the turn in some way, shape, or form. Mariah is relatively new to the wrestling scene. You know, not as experienced as Tony has been in the last, you know, decade or so. So how do you get someone over? Beat somebody who's more established than you. And a big event, and I think this is it. Do you do the Mercedes thing is also very interesting as well, Slack, because you have somebody who, from a contractual standpoint, um, and from from a contractual experience and just notoriety standpoint, is bigger than your potential world yeah. champion. But that's a good thing. That's yeah, a good thing. It, it is a good thing if if you spin it right. Well, yeah. She has made the TBS championship actually mean something. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting how they play it out. Cause if you give it to Mariah, there is also kind of potentially a comfort in, yes, she's the women's world champion, but she's not the biggest star in the division. So maybe that could help her kind of develop a little bit more, but we'll see with that. Uh, I think her winning the belt is really going to be where, like, it's weird. I don't know how to exactly word it. Yeah. But I feel like her winning the belt is going to be the start of, like, the new generation of main event. Um, yeah. And I honestly, I know I'm getting ahead of my, I'm obviously getting way ahead of myself again. But I honestly think that Julia Hart should be the one to win the belt after whether whoever wins this match. I totally I think forgot Julia Hart Julia was a Hart. thing. Totally forgot Julia Hart was a thing. <laughs> I, I, because she's, it's only because she's injured. No, oh, yeah, I think yes. Julia Hart is still one of the best gimmicks in the AEW women's division, bar none. Yeah. So I think whoever wins this match, regardless of who it is, I think they should drop to Julia Hart because I feel like she would be ready to also be the next flag bearer of this division. Yeah, we will definitely see. It's going to be a very interesting match, and it could definitely steal the show. Uh Oh yeah, this is a sleeper hit yeah. for sure. Speaking of uh, speaking of a match that this entire show was built around, Mercedes Monet putting the TBS Championship online. I still hate the fact that it's called TBS. Um, versus a returning Doctor Britt Baker DMD, a match that many people had been wanting for a very very long time, and we're finally going to get it. It's not for the world title; it's for the TBS Championship. Like we've already established, isn't necessarily a bad thing for AEW Women's Division. Mercedes Monet has done a lot of work, a lot of positive work, especially from a social media perspective. She is frequently on there with the title on most of her posts. Uh, she's bringing in Camila Heavy. They did a they did a segment at San Diego Comic Con with Mercedes and Britt. And Camille, that got a lot of traction uh, and a lot of buzz. Uh, Britt, on the other hand, returned and got a lot of negative buzz. Apparently, Brian Danielson suspended her for something going on with MGF, which is a very totally weird and different thing. Um, Bullshit. Yeah, I personally, yes, I agree with you, Slack. <laughs> in that, I don't think your girlfriend's there. Stay the fuck out of the women's dressing room. <laughs> it's also true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Very, 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 very fair. Um, but this, this is this is a marquee match for the for AEW All In, and with these two in the ring, I don't think you can have a bad match. They've told the story well enough. Now you just need to execute it in the ring, and I think they'll work very well together. Obviously, I'm wearing a Sasha Banks shirt. You know who I'm choosing. I was probably never gonna put. Picture pick brick in particular. So that's I'm picking Mercedes because of course I am. My question is, who are you going with, Slack? Okay, so before 
Bring your mic closer, by the way, sir. Um, I was gonna pick it up. <laughs> I always pick it up. Um, just I want to go back to my point that I made about um, why I picked Mariah May. Mm-hmm. The reason why is because of Camille. I think, I do think Monet wins this match, regardless of what I think actually is going to happen in this match. But I feel like what's going to happen is uh, Brett's going to have Mercedes in like a really bad position. Maybe either she has the the lock job locked in, or she's about to. And Camille gets involved somehow, and mm-hmm. Mercedes gets the upper hand, and it looks like Camille is gonna, you know, be the reason that Mercedes wins, and that's when Jamie Hader returns to even the odds. Oh, I think I think Jamie Hader. I remember reading something about a week and a half ago mm-hmm. that she's been cleared for a couple of weeks. But they're waiting, and I think this is when she returns. It's a good idea. Because this, I, I know it. It's weird to say it like this because it sounds like it's. A, this is a weird reference to sort of make back to, but Jamie coming back on this pay per view, but Mercedes still winning, is sort of like when the Undertaker came back as Biker Taker. Yeah, you remember yes. that? And then, but then, but then the heel still won. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that's what's gonna happen. Like I, they're gonna be like, "Oh, Jamie Hayter's back," but Mercedes still somehow wins it. I don't know how. I think maybe Jamie just like sort of takes out Camille, and then like the just like the Brits can be like, "Oh, Jamie's back," and then the distraction and then Mercedes, Mercedes capitalizes. Yeah, on like the in, yeah. like, but like it's not gonna lead to like Brit turning on Jamie or anything because I feel like that that I feel like that's coming. Yeah, still, but. Um, also, I had this thought because you mentioned the fact that you don't like the fact that it's called the TBS title. I never liked the I never liked titles named after television networks. So <laughs> yeah, it's dumb. So what if after Mercedes most likely retains the belt mm-hmm. on Sunday, she renames it to the CEO Championship? I've seen worse things in AEW. I don't think it's a bad. I don't think it's a great idea. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a good idea. But, but like CEO of what? No, that's just her. She's just the CEO. It's like of when the MJF division. renamed the international title the American Championship. Yeah, sort of like that. Oh, yeah, thank God. Oh my God, that's sort the like next that. match but we're like, doing. By the way. Oh my God! So, I got so males. many thoughts. Oh, so many males. thoughts about that match. I mean, the CEO championship. I would, I would love to see the design because AEO, I'm not AEO, sorry, AEW have... titles are hit and miss. Um, oh, so, so, they are, they, they they, are they're hit and sure. miss. Like sometimes they do it really well, they sometimes they're like, oh, maybe not. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What they don't, they don't know whether like Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, with the Japanese flag. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> One of the worst things I've ever seen in wrestling from a pro wrestler from a professional wrestling company <laughs> who didn't review this belt. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> taking like the, like rebranding at the CEO championship is a heel thing to do. I mean, Daniel Bryan re renamed well, he didn't rename the W championship, he made it biodegradable. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, I hate it. Was that so so oh, I did it was so it was bad. It was so bad. It was so great for the gimmick, but it looked like it was such ass. a dick move. Um, I wouldn't. I would be okay. Like, I just, I just want them to get away from naming titles after networks. Like the TNT Championship is dead in the water to me because they're not even on TNT anymore. But it could be. But even TNT was like, oh, <laughs> go to TBS, go to TBS. <laughs> I get it. But you TNT like is me. another way of saying dynamite. <laughs> so like, it kind of works. I in a weird, in a in weird a way, way, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, but the the, the see, in a forced, the in a slash. really forced, just, no, they no, totally no, meant it to be this Here's way. The, thing. the logo is the TV station's <laughs> logo, not explosive <laughs> dynamite from Looney Tunes With logo. Yeah, but now, not, but now the belt's dynamite. emo because Jack Perry is just so cool. Oh my god, I watched that video too. <laughs> not proud of, not proud of watching Jack that video, Perry. but I watched it. 
<laughs> Be it as it may. So we're saying Mercedes winning. Uh, I'm, I'm also picking yeah. Mercedes for the record. Yeah. Mercedes oh, it's, it's, oh, can't she book her own board? shit? Oh, and didn't Brit like get in trouble back? That's what we were. Weeks ago? Oh, that's what we were talking about. I wonder who's gonna she, win. She, yeah, she got in trouble, and then Brian Danson, who's the co- who's like the inf- the committee person, he's he's he's, he's taken wrestlers' yeah, court. Baker. Yeah, he suspended Britt Baker. He sided with MJF. Go I figure. Imagine, I can't imagine being like. <laughs> I can't imagine Dan Brian Brian Danielson does not strike me as the kind of guy to be like disciplining people. He'd be like, "Hey, don't do it again." No, please. I think Brian Danielson's kind of a dick in real life. No, Daniel Bryan would be a bitch. <laughs> Brian Danielson would kick your fucking. Oh, he's head. gonna be a dick in the AEW locker room. He's like, "You guys ain't shit." I mean, event WrestleMania, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Fuck you mean twice. <laughs> kind, kind of, of. yeah. <laughs> Eric goes like, "What about me?" It's like, "Shut up, Chris." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay, <laughs> Chris, you're the plaintiff. You don't really have let's power. Let's you were the third most important man in a two man in a two man in a two man ride. That's also true. Stephanie was more important to that than he was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stephanie was more important on storyline than Jericho was. They put the Triple H versus Stephanie McMahon feud, but had to work Chris Jericho <laughs> into it somehow, even though he was on fucking That's champion. That's also very true. But yeah, so here's here's what I know. Here's what here's what I've gathered about the Britt Baker thing. So a couple couple like a month or so ago, MGF and Osprey battled for the international championship when it was called the international championship at the time on Dynamite for a fucking hour. Okay, and a, <laughs> okay. there's no commercial. Break yeah, before. and apparently Britt. Picture and picture. It was a novel concept at the time. Oh, um, listen to this, Papa John's <laughs> ad where Will Osprey kicks MJF's yeah. head in. Dude, it wasn't. It wasn't a terrible wasn't. idea. Don't get me wrong. It really wasn't. In fact, it was really smart. Oh, but I just rather, honestly, I'd rather just fucking watch the commercial at that point. For real, because you're giving me the audio of the commercial. Yeah, and exactly. It's just like. Which I understand because you you, uh, yeah. you have to. My favorite, just, just sorry, just a small tangent. My favorite pitcher in pitcher <laughs> in AEW history is um oh fuck I can't remember who's the guy that I think he's, who's like the main dude that does like the death matches now like Nick Gage Nick or something Gage. or like yeah, Nick, Nick Gage. Gage yeah. Him versus Jericho in their death match, pitcher and pitcher. I will never forget. I will never forget this as long as I live. I will never forget this as long as I live. Dude, advertisers got mad about that. They were like, during a Papa John's ad for their new dip and sticks, (laughs) Nick Gage takes a full on unprotected chair shot to the fucking head while Papa John's is telling me about his new dip and sticks. It is the greatest <laughs> moment in AEW history. I don't care what anybody says. Oh it's the greatest moment in AEW history. See, that's, that's <laughs> and then we come back from pitcher and pitcher to Nick Gage using a pizza cutter on Chris Jericho's forehead. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's right. Okay, I someone had that. a sense of humor backstage then. Okay, good. Get to get AEW is pizza such cutter. a fucking. Oh man! I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that's just man. good. That's just good long story telling. <laughs> Paul Heyman would be like, "See, everything matters. Everything means something." something. Yes. <laughs> I completely forgot about that until I brought up the trip. Yeah. Oh, so again, God. apparently Britt Baker. Someone correct it's me wrong. Britt Baker <laughs> commented about, you know, why did they go for an hour on TV when you could have more spots for the women? Alicia Attal. Oh, shit. Who's Alicia Tout, who's MJF's girlfriend. Yeah. And historically nice. a problem in other indie, in other indie <laughs> locker rooms, the, <laughs> decided really? to go tell MJF this <laughs> after the match. Yep. And MJF apparently got upset, confronted Brit about it by, by, you know, walking into the women's locker room. Um, and I don't know if it was said, but apparently MJF at some point punched a wall. Uh, <laughs> and according to the wrestler court, that is Brian Danielson. Britt Baker got suspended for this. A fucking joke, man! This is a fucking joke. <laughs> in any other job, like legitimately, like legitimately, in any other job with, I'm, I, I almost said a different word, but like with separated dressing rooms, at any other job, you do what MJF did. You don't fucking have that job. Like, that's just something you don't do regardless. You don't walk into the women's changing area at all. I get what he's getting at, but you, like, either wait in the fucking hallway 
or are you fucking like mess? Like, there's no way he doesn't have her number. You make a fucking phone call. You don't barge into the fucking. Well, do you realize that your girlfriend's really fucking messy, MJF? <laughs> for real, like, like legit, like, and I, like, legitimately, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this. If MJF wasn't MJF, if if this was like Lee Moriarty, he doesn't have a fucking job anymore. Was, it he was just, uh, who was who was the little does... kid in um Jungle Saurus? <laughs> what was oh. his name? The little, the tiny guy. Uh, Michael Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah Michael Stone. He busts into the women's locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> like this person like Donnie from Wild oh, He's <laughs> Making noises. <laughs> like for real. Like, like legit. Yeah, you he'd don't be have fired. Yeah, he'd be fucking fired yeah. immediately. Like, I don't know. I feel like this whole thing. Is- <laughs> if it was the blame. Blame. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Like the old, like the only person getting away with him would be minus one. It's like, ah, oh. yeah, negative one. What are you doing here, little fella? Uh. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, that that's the thing. But yeah, Mercedes. Mercedes even used Brits getting suspended in a promo online. Like Anthony Bowen's probably allowed to get away with it too. <laughs> probably, yeah. probably. So yeah, yeah. So Brit, Brit, you're. I guess you were in hot water for, for, for making no for making. I'm a, sorry for yeah. making a valid criticism. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you stand up for your entire division, you bitch? Honestly, honestly, it doesn't matter if her criticism was valid or not. Like, it just doesn't matter. At that, point, at that point, valid. it's irrelevant. Yeah. Again, Lee Moriarty wouldn't be allowed to go an hour. Like, he wouldn't have a job anymore. I don't know how you keep anybody's attention span <laughs> in an hour-long television match. Oh, but I'm With to picture out a way in picture. They gave him an oxygen mask oh, yeah. after the fucking match, no too. It was, it was ridiculous. Anywho, speaking of somebody who's totally on his xenophobic heel run, MJF is battling Will Ospreay for what is now called the AEW American Championship with the most missed, with one of the most missed titles of all of the AEW titles in terms of design. So let's go through this lineage again. We did this a couple weeks ago. Let's go through the lineage again of the same exact title. Okay. It first started as the AEW All Atlantic Championship. Okay. All Atlantic with the Japanese flag on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All Atlanta City. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. They then decided, after much backlash and people telling them how fucking stupid they were, that they are going to change this to the international championship because apparently intercontinental. <laughs> the, the intercontinental. Because intercontinental title. was taken. So they. D- <laughs> Dude, I missed the intercontinental title. They should have kept that <laughs> one. <laughs> The European (laughs) Championship. So they named it the International Championship and then later on developed the Continental Championship, which is an amalgamation of three different titles. Whatever. Oh, yeah, that one was the Intercontinental <laughs> yeah. Champion. Honestly, dude, if they called it the Intercontinental Champion, the internet would, would love it. it. I'm not going to lie. It's so f- <laughs> I, honestly, I, it's something I would do if I were a wrestling company. Yeah, dude, it's the <laughs> fucking Intercontinental <laughs> title. Orange Cassidy wears it. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Orange Cassidy and Broken Matt Hardy just go back and forth every six yeah. months. <laughs> so, so, this is, so this is something that has been done before. MGF just changed it after beating Will Ospreay in a one-hour match on Dynamite, calling it the All-American Championship, and now he's pretty much, um, he's like 95 Lex Luger. He, I'm surprised he's not riding in the Lex Express at this point. He's showing up at all these indie shows. He has a giant American flag that drops down from the rafters whenever he... Is he a heel? I guess? Um... He's the heel in this, yes, and Osprey is supposed to be the sympathetic person. Ironically, Will Osprey okay. did the same exact thing in New Japan. <laughs> Isn't it great? We have a pro America heel. You don't see that. You see the foreign heel, not the American heel. Yeah, you know what I mean? We also have the pro American heel in, in WWE, which is, like, which is American made. Um with that as well. But Will Osprey did the same thing in New Japan when he named I think he named the US title the United the UK title. Yes, yeah, so it was a New Japan Pro Wrestling US title. He, he did. When he when he beat um he, he, after he beat Omega yeah. for it after Ben Dora, he held it and then changed it. And the, the design for that belt was a beautiful. Oh, the right Union there. Jack in the middle was nice, yes. Oh. Oh, so it was yeah. so tight. So tight. Yeah. Yeah. So Bring that So shit this is back. kind this is kind of poetic justice that he's getting mad that that MJF is doing the same thing that he did to somebody else. Uh but this is this is the feud. This is the feud. The other good thing about, other interesting thing about this feud. I'm about it. Other interesting thing about this feud is that for a long time, for the last couple of weeks and or months, uh, Will Ospreay 
has refused to hit the Tiger Driver 91 on anybody. He's kind of... 93. Huh? What was that, Slack? That was a 93? I thought it was 91, sorry. Tiger driver 93. Yeah. It's one of, it's one of it's one of a 90s tiger driver. Yeah, I, I get it. It's one of he he won't hit it for some reason. He's got this whole crisis of faith saying no one should ever be hit with that move. It's a neck breaker. Whatever. It's wrestling. Fuck <laughs> your neck will do her. Okay. Owen Hart, not Owen Hart. Brett on um, um Stone Cold took a pile driver and he was fine after a couple of months. I <laughs> I mean, yeah. He, he, I thought it was more fucked up that why is the whole compressed neck thing said, in the I'm yeah. 16, I just broke your neck. I thought that <laughs> yeah. was a little, yeah, yeah. That was a little overboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous. But yeah, his neck was yeah, fine. Yeah, actually, he made it. You know, he still had hope for Big E at some point. Um, He's still yeah, walking. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, honestly, though, like, I get it, because tomb, tomb, a tombstone or a power driver has a hint of danger yeah. to it. So, right? And yeah. it's, 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 not, it's not something that says, like, I'm glad they're not taking power drivers anymore, personally. Oh, well, <laughs> like, in WWE. In AEW, they take power drivers. Again, no, anywhere. Any, well, gonna, I guess, yeah, the Indies. No, AEW still, right? still does power drivers. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I I didn't I didn't think it, the power driver was a terrible Even idea. Then again, I don't think using the power driver is a terrible idea either, if you can do yeah. it right. But it has, like, it, that is part of wrestling lore now, that the power driver is, like, a no-no move because it's dangerous. Yeah. So That's the fact that he wants to avoid it works into a story. You know, it's just the Undertaker. So I think it works. Yeah, I I remember seeing um, Osprey drop Omega with the tire driver at Forbidden Door, and generally thinking that Omega was like not getting up. Like it was like the first time where I was like, "Oh wow, this just got really real, really fucking mm. quick." But with th- this, God man, I need I I, I need Will Osprey. To just decapitate MJF, <laughs> just just with like the nastiest hidden blade of all time. Just just take his stupid head off, please. Like, and it's not even about like Osprey being my guy. Which, by the way, I actually have him hitting Omega with the Tiger Driver on a freaking nice. T-shirt. It's 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 awesome. It's a great T-shirt. Um, but I just. Like, this is the problem, is that like I really feel like Osprey has to win it because I kind of want them to start a streak where his like all in is like Osprey's show. Oh, you're trying to create a, like, you're trying to like, create a Mister All In. Yeah, I feel like I feel I feel like AEW needs a Mister Insert Pay Per View here. Yeah, because that's a good that's a good gimmick. It is to me. I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed the idea of like like okay so. When they did it with Charlotte, they did it wrong. Because she was just Mrs. Pay-Per-View. Which is stupid. But with like Shawn Michaels being Mr. WrestleMania, and even to an extent Undertaker being Mr. WrestleMania because of mm-hmm. the streak, AEW needs that. And like right now, I feel like they're, they don't really have someone that could do that. Because a lot of guys don't win consistently at shows. You know, they, I think Omega might be like, I think he's like one and two at full gear yeah. or something. Right. So with this, yeah, you, I feel you, like you this, need the association. No, I see what you're saying for sure. I feel like this would be a great way to get Osprey. Not only that big win again in, in his home city or his home country, technically that I think this could be a really good story of like, if like next year you don't really reference it, like, cause they didn't really reference the undertaker having a WrestleMania streak until Randy Orton. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. but up to that point, he was already. I think. I think he was thirteen or no, or twelve and zero going into the Mania match. Something Gordon. like that, yeah. So with Osprey, you could have him win this one, win next year again, and then make it a point of mention, being like, "Will Osprey just is unbeatable at all in? Like he has beaten the best of the best this company has to offer at this pay per view." And I think that should that angle should start on Sunday. But the problem yeah. is, is that the fact that MJF didn't get disciplined for what he did in the Britt Baker incident makes me nervous that he's going to win this match. It's a high possibility. MJF has been an amazing organic draw for them. Because I don't know where MJF goes if he doesn't win this match. That's the issue. Hmm. Is that I feel like Osprey is insertable anywhere because he's just Will Osprey. But and 
I don't want to get off into a tangent. I'm going to keep this brief. The MJF, since he has come back, I am, I'm, I'm so over it. Because the heel turn was so unfreaking necessary. It is, it is unbelievable. Like, I, I, what, what is so funny is that, again, last time I was here, I said that MJF had no chance of being a heel for a while. Because to me, it didn't make sense. You didn't need him to be heel. You have enough top heels to yeah. be the top heel. But because he's MJF, he has to be that, you know, that douchebag heel. And like I understand it, but I think it was just pointless. And to then to then have Osprey drop the belt to him immediately. And now for MJF probably I would say to drop the belt back to Osprey, I think the value of this championship has gone down. Went down when you change it not for the third not, time its name. Not to say that the value was there to begin with, because the, the multiple time the multiple name changes does not help the value of a championship. Yeah. But I don't know. Like I just I feel like MJF could have been done so much. I feel like I feel like you could have had a huge, great storyline with MJF as world champion and like regardless of like I feel as as regard as good as the Adam Cole story was, I feel like that that was just like as soon as Adam Cole got injured, I feel like they should have just wrapped it up immediately because it just it killed MJF's entire momentum, I think, after he dropped that belt to Joe to then get the Cole story going and then only for them to both be injured. I feel that this is giving MJF something to do because Adam Cole got injured. Um, and, you know, Again. yeah, that's why that's why MJF has this title, I think, because and Cole got injured. Of the Again, guys yeah. around him and the yeah. belt. So, and it's ironic because this championship, whatever, it's the All Atlantic, the International, or the American Champion. From what I've gathered, this is supposed to be your Intercontinental Championship of your of your of your um of your company. This is your this is your this is your yeah. next in line, your second in command, a champion. <laughs> you know. Uh, let's be honest. I think they hold the TNT Championship in higher regard than they do. I with thought this so thing. for a second, and then they did this, and then you put it on, you know, MJF and Osprey, and you're going hot potato with it. Um. But I think you, I think this I, this is gonna be really weird for me to say because I usually Long Islander stick together. But I once it went to the American title, I was like, just give it to Osprey and let's get let's get done with this American title thing. I, I think this is a short lived thing for for MJF with the yeah. American Championship. Could it drag out more potentially? But this is made for MJF literally being a foreign heel in a foreign country, losing to be to the hometown person. Um, what they're doing with MJF, Fred's referenced in the comments. He said it's very similar to the Kevin Owens face of America when he won the U.S. Oh, championship. Kevin Owens but he was, was only so the face good. of America for like he was like the face of America for like a month. Face of America Owens was and fantastic. Then, and then he just dropped the belt. So I think Osprey hits the hits the hidden blade. Tire driver ninety three finally hits it again. One two three. Big win for him in England. Don't be surprised if Adam Cole shows up. Well, who do you have with this one? Oh. I think I think MJF wins, man. He's the golden goose, new gimmick, new title. There's no new point jacket. Put, yeah, new jacket. There's no point in having him lose it. But also, what the hell is Triller TV? It's one of the things that uh, it's one of one, one of the streamers, streamers one of the more it? popular streamers. It's really hard to sometimes find. When Roku just exactly. won't do. Uh, it's really hard sometimes to find AEW match cards because they don't. They don't publish publish them themselves. You gotta like search through like their social media or other people's social medias. And so I had to find one for for M Fight TV. For M or Fight TV. Yeah, sometimes look at fights, sometimes look at trailer. This is the one I found for trailer. So <laughs> so it's yeah, AEW has really bad with making their graphics accessible to people to like use. Like really bad. Um they don't even promote it when you watch when you watch the buy in shows for the they don't really promote like where to buy it. Yeah. There's like buy it. <laughs> buy it. Where? No, 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 no. Oh, we know. <laughs> Find it. <laughs> You're smart, right? <laughs> Our buy rates are down. What's going on, Tony? Oh, I can't wait till the end of the show. All right. So, so speaking of buy rates. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. go with MJF. You know why? Because Zeb Zeb Coulter comes out. <laughs> <laughs> he redoes we the people. Oh, no. Yeah, he's like, how does it feel, Britain? All the illegal sneaking <laughs> over your river. <laughs> what a wild gimmick oh. that was for such a long time. <laughs> that was fucking crazy, dude. 
Oh my god, he had Swagger and Cesaro doing it, and Cesaro's literally from another country. Oh this god. giant overweight dude with a crazy mustache oh, talking about illegals hopping the Dutch U.S. border tell. on television. And so, it is and fucking so little fucking motorized scooter. <laughs> what's so funny about that gimmick too is that when Swagger and um, when Jake Hager came to AEW and they had that promo with the inner circle and people were chanting we the people it works and Jericho's like, like it's a weird like, gimmick like we the people was a bad idea for bad creative and it's dead <laughs> buried it's like Jericho you do realize that was the only, only time, time he was only over time he him. only time he was over in his entire <laughs> career it is the one and only time that Jack Swagger was ever liked by anybody. It's like, oh, he had, like, the, the, have you, I'm not going to get off into the tangent, but have you seen that promo that he did, the, the You Don't Know Jack promo? I don't want to. It sounds really bad. Oh, my God. He, ta- he, he tries to get, like, the cheap pop where he talks about, like, having a hot wipe, and, like, nobody fucking cares. <laughs> he's just, like, he's, I got a stone cold fox of a wife. Woo! And it's just like, and and no, but and with and with the list, yeah, like, yeah, the only shit. person I can get away with and, having and, a stone cold fox of a wife list. in wrestling is oh. Carl Anderson. Oh yeah, <laughs> his, his hot everybody Asian knows wife. he's a hot Asian wife. These people don't have a hot Asian wife because Darby Allen apparently is abusive. Uh, we have a coffin match. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we have a coffin match for the TNT Championship. You know that title. Um. <laughs> With Jack Perry, the guy who got choked out last year at All In. Hopefully he doesn't choke up in the middle of the ring as he goes up against Darby Allin in AEW's rendition of a casket match. They're calling it a coffin match because Darby Allin does a coffin drop. You get it. You get it. We all get it here. Um, Jack Perry literally put somebody in a body bag on collision last last week. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. he then took the TNT championship. He's rebranded it. He's made it all black and emo and literally splattered red paint across it because it was so artsy. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, hardcore. so hardcore, bro. Um, going against Darby Allen, who literally has a death wish. Like, didn't Darby Allen get like? Me, didn't Darby Allen get like hit by a bus a couple of months ago? Like, legitimately hit by a bus. Um, imagine <laughs> being Darby Allen, where you've been hit by a bus, and yet it's still not the worst thing to happen in your year because you had to wrestle Jack Perry and put him over. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he is literally like an emo bad luck Brian as Darby Allen at this point. <laughs> oh, for real. Like, I love Darby Allen. I think I, I don't like the fact that, like, his, that he has a gimmick match, and it's like the coffin match. It's like this is. Uh, I don't. I don't like this. I think it's stupid. Darby Allen just has a thousand uh, ways to die with this. The problem is, is that like Darby's never lost a coffin match, but they also want to make Jack Perry matter, and it's 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 just not going to happen. <laughs> and it really sucks for Darby that he went from wanting to climb Mount Everest to getting hit by a fucking <laughs> bus, and now putting Jack Perry over in his own gimmick match. Here's how I see this because match ending. As much as it bugs me to say, Jack Perry pretty much is guaranteed. Jack to Perry's going to win this match, obviously. They, he's got to do something to avenge his horrible time last okay, year. Uh, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? Because we've talked about this. What? Darby Allen's going to have Jack Perry done dead to rights. He's going to open the casket, and Okada's going to be in the casket. He's going to go, bitch, and he's going to throw a fire. <laughs> that's how you. At him. That's how you get Okada in this. Here's how. Here's how I think the ending's going to be. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. He, I guarantee Okada's in that. Is Here's in how I think this match is going to end. At some point, and this is just me being a total dick, but I think it's going to be hysterical. Somehow, they're going to leave. They're going to leave ringside, and they're going to go backstage to Gorilla. See where I'm going here? And there's going to be no cameras in Gorilla. It's going to be grainy, like security cam footage. Okay. And <laughs> oh my god. Oh. And it's going to look like it's the punk Jack Perry footage. Absolutely, yes. (laughs) But it's Jack Perry choking out Darby Allen. Darby Allen, yes. Absolutely. And then the Jack Perry's going to bring him back to the ring choked out and put him in the coffin and the match is over. That's fantastic. (laughs) That's fantastic. You already showed the footage. You might as well lean into it all the way a year later. Screw it at this point. Be it as it may, Jack Perry wins this hands down because Darby Allen, I hate to say Darby Allen's nothing without Sting. Really is. Will Tarashock. 
I don't mean I'm a fan of Darby, but yeah, fuck it. Look at Jack Perry. Look at that beard. He means he does. It. He, he means has, it is a good beard. It is. It is a like he. He really does look like the he skateboard. does look like a broken man. Like Punk choked him out, and like his career is ruined after that. After Christian stopped, uh, after Christian stopped insulting his dead dad, Jack Perry's career went really down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like Jack Perry though. I like. By the way, I when like we get to Christian's guys. match, I'm gonna. Oh, I love Christian Cage in AEW, man. Goodness oh, fucking so gracious. Cool. Anywho. Oh, yeah. Guess what, folks? It's another title match. Uh, the <laughs> Okay, well, it's yeah, right. <laughs> It is the FTW Championship, uh, as Jericho calls it, the Four of the World Championship by Belenning Tree Chris Jericho. Uh, the reigning uh, FTW champion going up against Hook. And, Will, I will tell you something right now. I, I've got to personally tell you this one. So I was watching some video footage about for this match. Okay, and Hook fell cursed to Jericho taking out one of his eyes. Tell me where you've seen that game before, John Moxley. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Hook comes out on like collision or something, and Shivani's in the ring, and they're going to do an in-ring interview, and Shivani goes, Hook, well, I've got to know, how's your eye? Hook goes, can't you tell, Tony? I can't see. That was that's how the promo good, started. I go, goodness gracious. Good one, Hook. Yeah, I was like, fuck it, give it to Chris Jericho. That is my logic for this, because I like <laughs> my god, no. Can't you see? I can't see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a it's Well, a, Hook, I don't have your eyes. <laughs> so you're a fucking moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I am done with Hook. I was like, wow, there's a reason you weren't speaking when you first got got there. And I understand why now. Yeah. Give it the fucking Jericho at this point. I don't want Jericho to keep having a title, but give it the Jericho. Why is the F? What? What's his the the la- the learning tree? The, the learning, learning tree. tree. Yeah. Hi guys. What yeah. What the fuck does that mean? He's the learning tree. He's the people. He's the tree. No, he's not. Yes, he is. That's Stop that's his, that's the that's his gimmick. He is the learning tree. He's the person that you go and learn under, and your career becomes Even that he's much the better. Shortest man in his Yo, own faction. Uh, I, <laughs> I I know I know he never wants to do the same gimmick twice. He needs to constantly evolve. But hey, man. Stop. Sometimes you just gotta play the hits, <laughs> exactly. especially when you're almost sixty. Do you, do you know who's on? Ju- yeah. I don't even think Judas is the entrance theme anymore. Eh? It's not. It's not. It's like I am the learning tree, and then like a giant tree goes on the screen, and like it's whatever generic music he has. You know who's under his learning tree now? Every every single promo, whether it's backstage or in the ring, starts with "Hi guys." Yes. And 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 guess what? And guess what? It's on a fucking T-shirt. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know who's under his learning tree now, Will? Uh, the guy formerly known as Big Cass and is now known as Big Bill. He's under his learning tree. I did, I did know that. I did know Big Bill <laughs> in like, his learning tree. Toby Keith or like whatever his name is there. Like is he does look like a black there. Toby Keith. But yeah, I, I don't forgot what his name is. Um, it's something Keith. It's like it's like Damon Brian Keith. Or Keith something. Brian Keith. Sure. Brian Keith. What a what a name. You picked oh, him yeah. to win a match, I think, one time. <laughs> Watch out, <laughs> probably. <laughs> But yeah, I agree with you, Rick. Uh, Chris Jericho is winning this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the quicker we get over this match, the better, and that's what exactly what we're going to do. Because now, going to win. Because now we, oh, whatever. Because now we're going to have a triple threat for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Yes, another title match. Tell me where you've heard this before. FTR. There's more. Versus the Young Bucks, who are the current oh. Tag Team Champions, versus the Acclaimed. Oh, everyone! The acclaimed, the acclaimed yes, the acclaimed who have never got. I think the acclaimed have never actually gotten a shot at the tag titles. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they have been champions. They have been no. They haven't got a shot. The Young Bucks, I believe. It's one of those. It's no. They they took the they took, they took the tag the Bucks titles for Evan Our Glory. Okay, I'm still going with the acclaimed in this one. This really. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. The legend, wow. there's a legendary rivalry between FTR and the Young Bucks. It's been going on for a while. Exactly, which is why the acclaimed eat the pin. That's, I think that's why the acclaimed actually win. That's a little hmm. too obvious. Like. Yeah. I, exactly. Yeah, I, I think that there's an outlier here. Um, and I think the two, the two teams who have always been rivalry with each other will somehow screw the other one over and the acclaimed will take advantage. Um. See, the thing is, is like, and and Will and Will did say it, it's it's too easy, but sometimes predictable is predictable for a reason. Mm-hmm. 
So I think it is like the right thing to do because I don't. If anyone can like fact check this, I don't know how long the Bucks have been champion. Long. I think they've been. It's not. Yeah, it hasn't been long. So I think I don't think a I don't think Tony Khan is crazy enough to hot potato two championships. So I feel like the Bucks do retain this by pinning the acclaimed, but they do it because FTR set it up. So like the F- FTRs are gonna hit the big rig on the acclaimed, and then like double super kick, and and then the Bucks take advantage and pin the acclaimed, and that's how you keep that rivalry going and still keep the belts as part of it because they are one for one against each other when it comes to the belts. Hmm. So keeping the belts as part of that to get to that trilogy match, I think makes more sense than having the acclaim go over. I can also well, Ricky, there is, there's a card they have to sell out two weeks from now. <laughs> yes, in back in Chicago, go figure. Exactly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Bucks. I'm going to go with the Bucks. They retain shenanigans somehow. I mean, that's shenanigans galore in, in this match. I like, the, I like the acclaims. I mean, I like all three of these teams. All three of these teams are really, really good. I'm kind of over the acclaim, if I'm honest. That's fair. Like, it, like it's not... I don't have anything against them. It's just like the gimmick has gotten to a point where it's just like, <laughs> it's funny to say, but it's been five years of the same freaking gimmick and like it hit its peak. And I felt like there was a moment where they were going to have the acclaim break up and caster was going to go out on his own. But I feel like, I feel like by the end of the year, the acclaim aren't a team. Hmm. I mean, uh, me, something tells me that Caster is going to Who's the tall cat? Who's the, the yeah, Caster? He's the tall one? Yeah, he's the rapper. <clears throat> yeah, he's the better one. He's most likely, I think, going to turn on Bowens at some point. Whether it, it could happen at all in, I doubt it is. But I don't think the year ends with the acclaimed as a tag team, personally. We'll definitely see about that. So. Moving on from that, we have a couple more matches on this card, and this one is so cleverly known as a London ladder match. Wow, guys. Ooh, that's cute. <laughs> yes. That's London, cute. Yes. A London ladder match for the AEW that's too many Trios Championship. This has all the makings of what will go, what can go wrong, will go wrong in this match due to the amount of people trying to climb a goddamn ladder for three for three belts. Okay. Wait, there's oh, yeah. four teams, so it's gonna be twelve people in this match. Yes, indeed. Yes. Wait, where are they gonna put them? I don't know. <laughs> like the the teams so far are Christian Cage and the Patriarchy versus the Bang Bang Gang. Yes, huh. versus a House of Black, versus a mystery uh, trios team that has not been announced as of yet. They're doing a tournament, I believe, on Dynamite tomorrow night to determine who the last trio is. Okay. So, of the teams we know thus far, and just because I have nothing better to do, Christian Cage and the Patriarchy thing, it's kind of like... It's one of those things that's like cringe in oh, real life. It's, it's like cringe in real life, but wrestling gimmick, it works perfectly well. Like Roman oh, Reigns so Tribal Chief so much. Um But I'm literally gonna go with the darkest of horses here and just do House of Black, because why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> I think patriarchy is honestly one of the best things going in AEW. Like Christian's Titantron is is so is so great. It's just like it's like perseverance, courageous, dedicated, loving father. It's just like oh my god, like it's so it's so great. I'm yeah. mad you still call it Titantron. That was that was cute. What? <laughs> uh, point is, is that Christian retains his trios championship and continues his run. As just like the douchebag that carries all the belts, like, I love the fact that he carries all three belts of the street. The, the, it's so funny that he always carries the belt, even though he has never actually won the championship <laughs> himself. <laughs> it's so great. That, that is very true. Well, who who are you going to? You going to go with the mystery opponent or? Yes, I think exactly. you would. <laughs> yeah, I am. Someone has to. There's always one, and I'm that one. <laughs> Poor Bang Bang Gang, man. No one picked them. It's a great name. It is a bang bang name. Almost as good as a uh, there's over a time commission. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm surprised you just realized that. 
Although the bang banging does remind me of this new burrito shop in my town called Bang Bang Burritos, and they're fucking great. Uh, final match on the card. That's not for a world title directly. It's the casino oh, <laughs> directly. It's the casino gauntlet where the winner. The winner the of this match <laughs> is guaranteed a world Imagine. title shot. There have been a lot. And you have to guess which one of the idol titles in this match card are the world title. <laughs> it will give you a hint. It's not the American <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, so there's been a couple of names attached. So there's nothing totally, truly confirmed yet. So this is kind of a toss-up. Who should win the gauntlet match if they are in it? I've heard Hangman Page attached to this. Or potentially Orange Cassidy attached to this as well, because why the fuck not? Um, so, AEW correspondent Slack, who should win it? I feel like me and you are going to agree with this, but who should win the Casino Gauntlet title match? Um, I have two choices. Okay. I personally think that it should be Hangman Page, because it just, to me, it makes the most sense, because... I assume that Swerve is going to retain the title. So my guess is that it could it could be and should be Hangman. But there's a little part of me that thinks like it's like this little nugget back in back hey, here. You are not a nugget, won't... Slack. You are not a nugget. No, there's a little nugget in the back of my brain for you, Fretz. that will not let me not think this. But there's a part of me that thinks it could be Kenny Omega. Oof. And I don't Oof. know why. I don't know why. But there's something about this card that is, to me, I don't know why. I just, it's been a gut feeling since they announced this match that, because to not announce any of the participants ahead of time is interesting. So I don't know if they're going to announce them all tomorrow night yeah. or not. But I feel like they could actually do it. Like we we aren't telling you who's in the match until we actually get to the pay per view. So I'll say most likely it's Hangman Page, but I feel like there's a small, tiny chance that it could be Kenny Omega. Hangman Page was my is my choice. Like yeah. seriously, my choice. But you did kind of intrigue me on the possibility of Swerve and Kenny, because that's a good litmus test for Swerve. Or he, or even Okada, because Okada, Okada hasn't been isn't on the card. That's true. So like, I feel like your top, the top three choices right now are probably for me: Hangman, Okada, or Kenny. My dark horse in this, just because it would be so ridiculous. Um, I feel like I know where you're gonna it, it would be Joe Hendry. I thought you were going to say Dan. Howell. No, no, fuck Dan Housen. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Could you? I actually thought about Joe Henry being in AEW a couple hours ago, and I was like, oh, if Joe stupid, Henry, though, it? it would be said, WWE would never allow. It. If Joe Henry showed no, up never. as a part of the Casino Gauntlet match, well, like big it casino. would be one of the one of the most ridiculous things ever, and he would probably he'd be literally an international sensation yet again, Joe Henry. Do you think it has to be like, like? Do you think they're going? Do you think they they are going to announce the participants ahead of time, or do you think they're going to leave that as like a little surprise for the paper? I team? like. I always like the idea of naming some, but not all. Like when they like with the Royal Rumble. Well, yes, man, and also when they used to do the Casino Battle Royal, the, you know, with the Joker card or the Wild Card at the end, was always a great Wasn't surprise. Wasn't normally a ladder match? Like what? What's with the gauntlet match? <laughs> It's a gauntlet match, so like one person is going to start. I don't, you don't know. I would, I would like. To no, no, no. I know what a ga- I know what a gauntlet yeah. match is. I'm just wondering why they changed it from the ladder match. Because they already have a That's ladder true, match. They already have one. Yeah. But yeah, two ladder <laughs> matches. So they have two different types of matches. Oh wait. What? Yeah, yeah. You where are you, where are you going with the slack? No, no. <laughs> sorry, I got thrown off. I didn't. I forgot that there was a ladder match already on. Yeah. This card. Well, I, I thought I thought what Will was getting at was like they already had the match, like they already did the casino ladder match this year. I thought that's what he was getting. No, no, at. no, no. They already have a ladder match, another ladder match on the card. Okay, because I was like, they like have it. two different match types where the, the where the winner gets the same fucking thing. Like that's fucking stupid, but so AEW. At least it's at least it's not the casino battle royale. Oh god. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, li- I I did like the concept of Casino Battle Royale with the Joker and people come out in suits. They couldn't do Royal Rumble. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah no. it wasn't a ter- it wasn't a terrible idea. It was just like the space. You run you run out of Jokers after a while once you've established your company. 
You know what I mean? Not to mm-hmm. mention that they, they, they kind of ruined the idea of a Joker card because they made MJF the Joker on his return. That's also a thing as well. Uh, but are, wait, So you're confused on things, Slack. Were you talking about the upper like ladder match they have where they have to take that giant freaking like Sonic ring and the guarantees exactly the world title? Yeah. Shot? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because yeah. like I've always thought that that I like I've always I've always liked the idea of like money in the bank. Money in the bank is my favorite gimmick there is. Like, I, I love the yeah. I, I love, love the I love, idea. I love money in the bank too. Having yeah. having just like the golden ticket mm-hmm. to a world championship, unless your name is Damian Sandow or Baron Corbin. <laughs> That's, but, that was, or that was Baron um, Corbin's fault. <laughs> oh yeah, right. How dare you talk about concussions and how bad they are for people? You dick. You can't talk to the um, guy during a. You can't challenge the guy during a lecture. <laughs> Oh, it was a company sponsored lecture. <laughs> a lecture about why concussions aren't a big deal. Yes, you can't antagonize the person that was kind of that he was kind of in a class it's action lawsuit against. Stupid, Ricky, man. It's stupid though. What, the concussions are like, stupid? No, the fact that they had a freaking meeting about why concussions aren't that big of a deal and then Baron It was Corbin more like a company doghouse. seminars like when you have to do training for a company. It's one of those things that you have to go through. It's ridiculous to me. Anyway, but wouldn't wouldn't the, wouldn't the teaching be how concussions are a big deal? Yeah, no, that 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 was the problem. Is that that's why Corbin got in trouble because he said like he stood up against the guy that was giving the lecture and said that like concussions need to be a bigger deal, like it's something that we need to deal with. He like, it's not antagonized just like antagonized the speaker. The house, CTE and concussions go hand in hand, and they were like, oh, it doesn't. He's like, no, it fucking does. Well. Here's the but, thing. When Rus when I mean you shouldn't ignore. You shouldn't ignore. Yeah. When Rusev slash Miro is the voice of reason, I think you're in the wrong. Anyway, point <laughs> I've always really liked the money in the bank concept and I I wish AEW uh, the the fucking giant poker chip is, is so stupid. Forget about the giant like, poker chip. <laughs> Like, like, just make it, just make it a briefcase. Like, you they can't, can't make it a briefcase because I will shit on that concept all the time. It's like, make it, make it a tote oh, bag or something. I'm sorry, like guys. <laughs> I'm just imagining that creative meeting. Guys, what, what can we put above the ring? Well, uh, King Ricky said that he doesn't want he he will shit all over a briefcase. I'm not going to be the only it, one to shit, shit on a briefcase when it's clearly stealing someone else's idea. Like the ring yes, and the poker the chip. Of, the ring and the poker uh, the chip are great having, ideas. Like, but the idea of having something hanging above the above like the ring to be a briefcase, they've done briefcases before Money in the Bank was a thing. TNA TNA did the briefcase too, Feast of oh, Fire. Feast of Fire, which by the way, which Feast of Fire, awesome. <laughs> no, it's not. It's stupid. Oh, here we go. Because, oh, fuck you. No, <laughs> fuck you. Think about it. Think about you take it. the risk. You take the risk. Exactly. Everyone gets a briefcase, but, but I, what do you get? But like, why oh, bother like win no the ma- Why bother trying to win the match? Exactly. There's a yeah, it's you're no deal. The wrestling match. But if there's a chance I'm going to get fired, I'm probably not going re- to not going to want to take down one of those cases. If there's yeah, a chance, see, see fired. slack, and that's why you're not a wrestler. <laughs> because some people would literally risk it all for a title they shot. They fired EC3 for Christ's sake. EC3 needed to yeah, be fired. Bro. That, that did that did happen. That did happen. That was so. Dog ass. Anyway. Fuck a lie. It is a really shitty way to actually get fired. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be an Congratulations match. On the match. that'd be pretty. <laughs> I'd be pretty butter. <laughs> like if there was storyline like John C got fired and he was really on Raw the next week. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Because I bought. I've always. I've always hated that where it's just like it's like someone gets banned. It's like oh, I bought a ticket though. I could be here. It's like oh. Stop it. Stop it, please. That's <laughs> it, dude. Next time I buy a ticket, I'm just going to go shove it. In front <laughs> it's of someone's face. Chicken, I got it. I got it. I, I got it. I, I, I paid for this. I can be here. <laughs> they only had. Like, Cena, Cena got fired. Yeah, but he bought a ticket. So well, here's, the play, here's, the, here's why the gimmick doesn't work anymore. They don't I'm have sorry, they don't have paper tickets. tickets yeah. Like, they're all on your phone. Like, John Cena should be like. I still get paper tickets. I still get paper tickets. <laughs> we don't have paper tickets. Yeah, anymore. we rarely do. Yeah, we, don't, do. we, don't have, we don't have stubs. It's a it's a bummer, dude. This country sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, who is your pick for the casino gala match? It could literally be anybody. Oh, dude, dude, Wardlow. Oh, <laughs> that's a good that's a good one, actually. <laughs> that's actually not, it's a, not terrible. a terrible Fred's, choice. Fred's, Fred says Fred says Pac, but I'm going Wardlow just for what no if reason. It's Wardlow, but then like Adam Cole makes him give it to him when he's healthy. It also could be Adam Cole. Who the fuck knows how how he's doing? Um, Baby, yeah. It also could be Adam Cole. So, li- 
gonna be Bobby Fish. <laughs> please no. <laughs> um, please. Where's the lie? God, in that, in that case, let it be. Is is it gonna be cool? Kyle? <laughs> I was gonna go with Leo Rush. Um. <laughs> That should be his entrance name. It's just like, folks, where's the line? And then there's no entrance folks. music. Folks. <laughs> yes. Man. So anyway, folks, More that's Bobby. it. We that's all we have for AEW All In. And since they're not going to tell you, I will. You can find you can order <laughs> AEW All In from Bleacher Report. <laughs> Your cable or satellite provider, if you still have that thing. <laughs> Apparently, Dave and Buster's just shows it, so show up to Dave and Buster. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Triller TV, if you if Roku's not enough for you. YouTube, pay-per-view.com, but why? And <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And the Zen. You can call your local cable provider. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Zen or whatever, that thing that kind of shows the, the zone, zone, yeah. The kind of thing that kind of shows boxing here and there. So, yeah. Or, you know, just just stream it like everybody else <laughs> will probably be doing who don't want to just watch it or next watch day. it the next you day. Are, are you guys aware of that. one of the one of the pre-show matches, though, and how, ins- how insanely amazing it's going yeah, to be? Yeah, but it's a pre-show match, so it doesn't count. Anywho. <laughs> but Chris Allen had and Stokely against Tomohiro Ishii and Will Knight. The alien oh, and the so black great. guy versus the black chick and the crazy, historically, like, insane... Japanese wrestler. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Stokely for the win. And probably Stokely can't wrestle worth a damn, but he's funny as hell. Oh, um, <laughs> Stokely can't. Stokely also has a great Twitter game. But anywho, folks, that is all we have for AW All In. Like I said, the first the big matches seem like a big match, and I think it's going to be good enough for them to carry the card and make it be memorable for the most part. The bottom half is, is kind of a, you're throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, <laughs> with that being said, it is going to be on 1 p.m. on a Sunday in the on the East Coast, uh, which is going to be it's a great time for wrestling that no one's actually going to be able to watch because they still don't have their own network to do this on. Um, be as it may, I I have some pretty good expectations for this, but knowing AEW, something funky might happen. So I'm going to go a safe 7.5. That I think this is going to be 7.5 crowns out of 10. Uh, Will Tarasak, what are you going with? God damn, I forgot we do this for yeah. AEW. Uh seven. I'll give it I'll give it the old right in the middle seven. Yeah, that, that's that's sound. It's that's a, it's the safe Average. bet. It's the safe bet. Yeah, it's a safe yeah, bet. It's that's the, what I meant. I'm gonna go with the I'm safe going with bet. the safe Lucky number not lucky yeah. number seven. AEW correspondent slack. How do you think this is gonna be from your insider's perspective? Um I have a feeling that the undercard is going to underperform. Hence why we're the undercard. But the, <laughs> no, but you <laughs> My point is, is that like they should the matches should be better than they're gonna be because like there is a lot of talent in the undercard, but I feel like they're gonna underperform. But I feel like the high points are gonna be very high points, so I'm going to have to agree with Will and say a seven simply because I don't think I I got a feeling like four at least four matches on this card are not gonna be meeting the expectations that they're supposed to. Oh, yeah, that ladder match is going to be an absolute disaster. I can feel it in my bones. Well, I, I would say, <laughs> I honestly would say the ladder match, the gauntlet match, the triple threat tag team match, and I don't like saying this, but I honestly have a weird feeling that Mariah May, Tony Storm might underperform a bit. It's also highly possible. It depends on where they're placed in the car, too. It's going to have a big... big yeah. Game. And on AEW's... Oof, their match that placement. That could open the card. I can honestly see that opening the card. Yeah, I mean, if they if they if they book it correctly, uh, and I I'm not sold yet on match placement with AEW. Not yeah, yet. They got, they're not weird with that. A couple of bonus questions before we end out the show. More so for me and me and Will and K. Whenever they give our give the whenever they give uh us their guesses. Um, here's a big question I have. So mm. AEW reportedly did. 81,000 or so people last year at Wembley. Is the crowd
This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.